And today on the bench I've got a mixing desk. This is a rather modern 12 channel job. It's a Soundcraft EFX12 and there's no output. And I consider this to be a rather fancy mixing desk. Uh, full of features, loads of knobs, sockets and sliders. If only we knew what they all did. I won't watch some of them are wonky. Hmm. And it features some Lexicon technology, a 24 bit digital effects processor. I hope that's not knackered. Well this could take quite a while to check out. Uh, there's a lot going on. Well, the power sockets on the bottom. And I'll start with channels one and two. And I'll monitor the monitor output. Although it says monitor output there. Hmm. Let's get some power on it. Oh, there is some life, but nothing coming out of it. Let's try these uh, sliders. <laughs> Not even twiddling this helps. See I'm never sure if this is the fault or I just don't know how to use it. <laughs> Let's try some other outputs. Ah we got something. Wow. And that's been affected by the sliders for the uh, left and right mix. That's good. I should be able to see the two signals I'm injecting. So there's channel 2 which is a sine wave I think 2 kilohertz and there whoop. There's a 1 kilohertz triangle wave when you mix the two together and you get that. My attention is drawn to this. Someone's added this label on here. What's going on there? Oh no. That's not good. There's about what? 1 volt of offset there. What about this one? Same there. That's not good. So this thing's definitely got to come apart and that's going to be quite a lot of work. So I want to check that I've captured all the faults on this before I do that. Let's put it in the only working output we've got and just, oh I need to set all these at similar settings. What I want to do is check that all the inputs are working because when I take this apart I'm going to know that I'm dealing with all of the faults together. Helps if you turn all the sliders up as well. So now I should see the same output on every channel. So yes. Yeah, very good so far. I'm going to do the same with the microphone input, so I need to change my cable. This is another balance signal. I need to knock the amplitude down on this, say 30 millivolts. Test in the same way, just go from socket to socket. And last but not least, that one. Good. I'll tell you, I've not seen any life out of this. What's going on there? Might have if you press this pre fader listen. <laughs> and it does. And it responds to the gain as well. Well, that's something working that I didn't think was. And of course now there's something to monitor, the headphones work, monitors working, left and right, and they're still giving DC out. And I still don't know about this, I'm not sure what it's doing, it seems to do something. Quite what, I don't know. Well, I've seen enough, let's get it apart. Mixing desks take ages to get inside. They weren't always this bad. The older mixers had separate modules for each channel, so you didn't need to take all the knobs off, and you could just remove the channel that had the fault. That was probably until the 90s. Now they make them all like this, because it's cheaper, less parts. Unfortunately, you have to go through all this palaver just for the simplest of servicing. Cheeky. <laughs> Now look, they've used every type of fastener on this, it's a bit of a workout. Yes, there's a lot of parts, a lot. There's 17 fader caps, 118 knobs, 39 jack socket nuts, and 39 washers to go with it, uh, 47 screws. That's a total of 260 parts, just to get the lid off.
and then there's all these little plastic washers to get off. You know what, these things can wait till the end. <laughs> I'll just tip them out or something. You can hardly see them. Crikey. And in they go. We're not done yet, there's more screws. Thank God that's off. <laughs> that was hard work. Well, the board's very neat. Look at this, laid out with some OCD, I reckon. Very uniform. <laughs> Got a bit of logic going on here. It's probably to drive this bar graph. And this must be to the sound processor. There's no way any of these chips do sound processing. In some respects, this is better because you've got so many duplicated circuits, you can spot problems a bit more easily. But there's nothing to see wrong by the naked eye. It all looks very tidy. Let's see how it lights up with the clothes off. I'll tell you what though, there's a bit of a whiff coming off here. It's a bit hot. Well, just surveying the board. Oh, oh straight away, look at these. These chips here. Oh, there's one. How hot's that? 57 degrees. Crikey. Oh, and there's more here. Oh, these must be the output chips. 60 degrees. Yeah, I knew it smelt a bit warm. Well, there's another two hot ones here. Uh, these are the same op amps as the others. Yeah, not sure. And this lot are all running cool there, and they're all the same temperature. Nice. Yeah, these all look okay. Nice, steady temperature. Just looking at the side, there's a board underneath. And that looks pretty warm. Mm, 55 degrees or so. Yeah, turn that off. I think I need to take this board out and have a look underneath. <laughs> Hope that's not a big job. And of course that means more screws. I imagine this is the Lexicon FX board. There are little plastic screws on here. We'll just get those out of the way. Okay, there's the brains. This is definitely the digital signal processor or the effects board. You can see a big fat DSP chip here, Harman Audio DNA. That's got to be it. Probably some memory there and God knows what. Clever stuff. But is it getting hot? I'll put an insulator behind there because otherwise it will get hot. <laughs> We'll power it up. Let's get the camera on it. Oh, it's a bit of heat building there. What about the rest of it? Core of the chip. I don't think that's a problem. Measure from the ground there to there. Yeah, we've got five volts. About the input. Yeah, nearly eight. Yeah, nothing wrong there. So this can go back then. I don't want to uh, confuse the issue. <laughs> so I think there's quite a lot of damaged chips on here. They're all uh, op-amp chips and uh, I think someone's done something naughty to this. <laughs> but I have to take the board off. I'm going to pop this ribbon cable out if I can. It's a tight one. <laughs> and the power supply connector lurking in the dark. And hopefully this will come off. Yes. So we've got a total of six chips to change. And uh, the good news is they're all the same. They're all NJM5532s. And the three down there. The problem with these three is getting at them. They are buried around these sockets. And these are quite tall. Um, I'm going to be using hot air to remove them and replace them. And, and I'm also concerned that these are going to get melted, so these sockets need to come off. Although this one's accessible, it's pretty close to this plastic switch, and I don't know if ruin that. And these two aren't near anything plastic, so um, these are okay. These are actually quite easy to change.
Oh, they're still tight. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm just going to flood fill this one. Otherwise, I'll have to change the tip on the desolding tool, and I don't think it's worth it. Well, that's cleared the way for these. Now I can actually get on and unsolder them. <laughs> Flicking them off. <laughs> it works, I suppose. Just going to put a bit of flux on here, which will help it solder a lot easier. And I'm also going to add a little bit of extra solder, uh, mainly because it's got um, a lower melting temperature. I'm just going to put the chip on. Nudge it into position. And there's one. Getting it into a rough position. I just moved the board round so I could get in it a bit easier. <laughs> I'm just going to rework this one. bit close to this pot here, it's slightly uh, melted it a bit that won't affect its um, performance but try not to do too much of that just going to clean the flux off this board so it just looks a bit tidier yeah? because it is quite sticky stuff I mean, don't think it hurts anything <laughs> <laughs> Not significantly. Well, that's a bit of practice for the next three. <laughs> Got me eye in now. Now we're going for IC number four. This is the first one I saw glowing away. Again, just get some heat in. So only if they're connected to ground that you have the big trouble. Let's see if that's willing to move yet. We'll put some fresh solder on. Might clean that up a bit as well first. Mm. 
Dab it up. <laughs> Dab it because I've got no patience. On with a bit of flux. Back to the hot air. Touch these legs up just in case. Doesn't hurt to. Well, they passed the nudge test. <laughs> And just these two chips left now, they were also glowing. To be honest, I could have checked the signals coming in and out, but to be fair, these chips quite cheap, and if I've got to change one, I might as well just get on with the lot. Just grabbing it in anticipation of it coming loose. They were off. I do this one as right away because that took a lot of time to get the heat into the board and uh, I'm hoping it's travelled. <laughs> oh, I'm not liking that. The bottom of the slider's melting. Oh, I'm abandoning this. <laughs> I'm not liking what it's doing to this slider here. That could be a problem and it shouldn't be bubbling out the side like that. Hopefully it's just minor damage. I'll do this the old fashioned way. I'll just give it a bit of a drowning in solver. Get that one leg on. Check the alignments. Yeah, it looks okay. Just tack that leg. Okay, and just get the iron just to go and warm all the legs up one at a time. Like that. Give it a little nudge check. Nothing loose outside. Yeah, they're okay. Just wash that sticky flux residue off. Oh, that feels okay. Fortunately, yeah, I think it's only cosmetic. <laughs> Not too worried. Well, I think that's the sort of damage you do when you put phantom power on the output of your mixing desk. <laughs> Hopefully, I've got it all. I'm gonna put the sockets on though to test it. Put this switch back in as well. It won't work properly without this. I'm sure of that. It's a snug fit though. And these sockets as well, these are also fairly tight in there, so I suppose it's a good thing. 
make sure I'm getting the right way round. Got that sort of corner on them. <laughs> Get this ribbon cable back in. It's a little bit of a challenge, a bit tight there. Might need a bit of a push with a screwdriver. There we go. Power cable, it's a bit of an awkward one to get out. Put it roughly in place. I'm going to try the auxiliary and the effects output. Well, we got something. So the effects are working. If I change options, different things are happening. Okay, if they work, we'll do the next ones. This is the stereo output number one. No, nothing there. Try channel two. Still nothing. Well, that's working. That's the headphones and the monitor. They're working. Okay. I just noticed the waveform's not right. I've lost the channel. Let's check all the buttons at the right level. Yeah, we're not not muted. What's channel one? Channel one's not working. But it worked before so I think it's a broken connection or something. I'm well, just seeing if I can just poke around and provoke something to happen. Oh, hang on. Is it this pot here? It is the balance or the pan pot. Well, look at that, Wig wiggles on and off. <laughs> like a switch. It's not this capacitor, is it? Now there's something. Ah, it doesn't even like that. Mute. Lights. It's sort of affected a bit. There's something around here. There's not a lot underneath this board, as we saw. There's no components. Wow, I'm pinching the board. <laughs> it's coming back on and off. It could be a bad wire, but I don't know. I've had them before, very quite rare. And something this clean as well. Oh, do you know what? It's this resistor. I think this resistor's dodgy. Or at least the soldering of it is dodgy. Oh, 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 oh dear. <laughs> Well, I never. <laughs> it's broke in half. The end cap's come clean off. That's supposed to be a 10k resistor. <laughs> These resistors come on at a rather large reel, so it's a bit annoying. <laughs> sort of peel one off. If I can start the thing open. Come on. Where'd that go? Charming. <laughs> it's a good job they come on reels of 5,000. Anyway, there it is. Clean it a bit. Let's put it roughly in position and just touch it with the iron, just get the iron to wet both pads at the same time. That'll do. Well that was an annoying foot wasn't it? <laughs> so, is Channel 1 alive now? Oh yes, I think that's good actually. Yes. So I've got one sine wave and another one. Yes. 
Yes, definitely. Turn channel 2 off. Yeah. Both off. Yeah. Okay, that's that fixed. If I rattle the pots, nothing goes wrong. Good. I'll check there's no more like that. So just work one channel at a time. Check it's working. So that one's on. Yes. I did this before. That's working. And that's working. That one's working. And this one. And that one. Oh. That's not working. What's that? Channel 12. Don't suppose we've got another crap resistor, have we? What the chances of that, eh? Well, this is another channel that worked before, so I'm thinking it's mechanical damage again. I don't think it's an electronic fault. It's just gone. The old finger probe's off again. Just to point out, this is all low voltage stuff. The power supply is well out of the way. Oh! Oh, what have I done? It's come back on. What did I just do? Oh! Oh, look! Oh, it's them bloody wires. Got broken wire. Hmm. Because it reaches, I'm just going to put a blob of solder on there. On the wire. And just tap that back on. Actually looking, there's one here that's been cut in half and another one broken here. I don't think I'm the first person to open this thing up. That's perfect. That's working great. No messing. Has it fixed the other channels? So this is stereo channel 1. No. Nothing there. And channel 2. Nah, still no good. Well to fix this last problem I need to use another oscilloscope I think. Just looking how it's laid out in each stereo channel. There's a ground wire which has course got no signal on. Then there should be a left and a right. Neither have got signals on. Same here. And these wires aren't broken, I've checked. And we've got op amps down near the faders for the stereo channel. So you've got pin 1 should be an output. And of course there's nothing, but it's the inputs I'm interested in. Nothing on any of those pins. Up here. No. No. And no. Just noise, really. Same for both channels. Which I'm finding really strange. But I do spy these resistors and think we've seen broken resistors already. Yes, big loud signal there and there. Although different volumes mind you. <laughs> but nothing on that side and nothing on that side. <laughs> I think we may have a problem there. Just can measure the resistance of them in circuit to see what they measure. 3.4k that one, about this one. 3.1. <laughs> to be fair, I can't actually see what they're supposed to be. <laughs> Damn, getting old. <laughs> they're both 10 kilo ohms, so you know it's not bad. But I want to check the um, output. So from ground, measure resistance to there, and we got 940 ohms. Okay. Here. Oh, got a dead short. Hmm. I just had another look at the lid of this mixing desk, and I've noticed that these stereo outputs are actually inputs. That's why there's no signal. There's even a gain knob for each one. That's definitely input terminology. It even shows on the block diagram, look. So if I put these in the monitor outputs, and try an input. Well look at that. <laughs> and the other stereo channel. Yeah, perfect. And the faders work too. Nothing wrong with it. 
well that ends that for lava. Now, <laughs> there's only a couple of things left to check. I can remove the monitor output now. I'm going to check the main mixer output. It does require a change of cable. Because this is for a um, balanced output. So I'm going to need to put these in. Because my cable's got crocodile clips on the end. Let's put the ground on there. Put the one half of the balance signal there, one over there. There we go. It's not a very balanced output. There's a um, waveform missing. Hmm. It might be just cheaply implemented, mind you. But at least that's working. Let's check the other socket. That's also good. Oh yes, it is done on the cheap. Look, goes to uh, the hot connection, and the cold connection is just resistor to ground. And the last socket's just to check the other stereo ones. The last thing to check is the phantom power for the microphone. And there should be 48 volts on here. Well, we're on the home straight now. Uh, just the obligatory part twiddling test. Uh, there's a lot of parts. This is going to be quite monotonous. I'll set the input on there. <laughs> Start twiddling. Looking for trouble. No problems there. Well that's everything tested on here that I know about, so <laughs> that's it, it's time to put the lid back on. And these plastic washers on, what a nuisance these are, you can hardly see them. Well here we go, you know my thoughts on all these knobs, far too many, <laughs> and I think they're worse to put back together than they are to take apart, although they're not so tight. <laughs> Well they're great fun to play with but <laughs> I hope I don't get any more of these in. <laughs> Catch you next time.